<clears throat> and we are recording and I'm saying hello today to Dr. Sheila Marr. And we've just had a very brief conversation just before to sort of get to know each other and a little bit more about what's going on. We've just put it out there to spirit to let this conversation be as beneficial to everybody hearing that we are spirit having a human experience sometimes with the ups and downs <laughs> sometimes with the easy easy life and being able to create things out of thin air and we're also talking today very briefly about how we came to be spiritually aware how we came to become conscious and um, Shuni will you introduce yourself just give us a little bit of your history and give us a little bit about what's important to you okay um right well I'm um, Shunamar, and uh, it's my birthday this month, and I'm I'm reaching uh, a big a big birthday. I'm going to be sixty <laughs> at the end of this month on the 29th. Yeah, um, and the I've had a long and interesting life, but to put, put it down. But anyway, I live in Glasgow, uh, or in the south side of Glasgow in Scotland, and. Um, the usual things, the way you define yourself are uh, I'm married and I've got two children who are grown up and I've got a little grandson who is going to be two next month and he's the apple of my eye and I adore him to bits and look after him a couple of days a week. Um, and I, I have a business called Spiritual Awakening Support, uh, who I'm helping people. Um, I'm here to advise, educate and support people who are on their awakening path at any level. And I have various um, things like courses and services and things that I offer to help people on that awakening path. I think that's about OK. No, no, I mean, that, it rounds it all off beautifully <laughs> with a great big blue bow. <laughs> One of the questions I love to ask, and we, we touched on it earlier on, I said, right, I'm just going to press record now because this is what we're here to talk about. How did you become aware that you are a spirit having a human experience? And I often ask, was it like, boom, a big bang? Was it a gradual thing? Or did you, were you sort of born with that awareness? So how did it work for you? No, I wasn't born with the awareness. Um, it happened uh, through, I think, through what often happens with the awakening is there's some catalyst that propels you through that that final level to into the conscious awakening. And I realise now, looking back at it, that in fact that um, lifting off of the layers of the conscious awareness actually started about 24 years ago, but it only actually came right the way through to the surface between consciously aware of it about four years ago. Uh, as of now, actually, because... Um, about four years ago, I had been working as a lecturer in a university and there had been loads of stuff that had been going on that particular year, 2016. Um, 2016 had been a, a big year. Uh, there had been the um, exit stuff that had been going on and oh, yeah. uh, and uh and and that was that had got my anxieties up and um and then at the, in the school that I was in in the university had been restructured and they had stripped out stuff and um and then um there was all the um, American Trump you know Donald Trump came in as president and on all of these kind of politics on the world stage and things that were happening that I didn't want to happen and I um uh, my anxiety levels had been going through the roof. I had also been having some issues with my body because at, at that point I had tried, I, I had, well, my body journey is a whole story in itself and we might touch on that later, but I, I, at that particular point I had been um, going on a um, high, low carb, high fat diet and, um, and I had cut out sort of carbohydrates and my body had reacted really strongly and I was going through all sorts of um, palpitations and I was getting whoosh, whoosh, whoosh in my ears and I was, my anxiety levels were through the roof and, um, and it had ended up that I, that had been ongoing for months and months and months and I, I, I started to, I, it got to the point where I had adrenal burnout and then I ended up going into a depression and I knew that I that I needed to take time off work because it's not the first time that I'd had a breakdown. I'd had a catalyst that I'd been in my life have always been precipitated by a breakdown of some sort, you know, where I had pushed myself beyond my limits and had ended up um, over uh, over uh, stimulated or, um, or, or burnt out. And so when I got to this stage, uh, here I was um, going off work and I did go off work for eight weeks. And I had a really long, hard look at myself and I started to um, try and find out how I could help myself. And up until that point, up until that point, I had for the previous 11 years been going to uh, um, a spiritual coach. And she wasn't a spiritual coach. She was like a life coach. And 
um, I realise now looking back and ever since had conversations with her that she was almost like uh, um, doing spiritual uh, spiritual healing at a kind of um, um, incognito level. She didn't mention it. She, <laughs> she, 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 mentioned, she, she mentioned stuff about kinesiology and she mentioned stuff about getting things through and whatever. And she was empathic and she did all this, but she never mentioned it. It was all because she knew that, you know, that would have been way, way off the scale you with me. That was, that, <laughs> yeah, I would have run, you know. But, and, and I went back to her every, all the time because I knew it worked. I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know how all this thing worked, but I knew it worked. And I'd been going to her for about 11 years. And um, and 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 she had said to me about this time four years ago, she said, Shana, for the last year and a half, you've been coming to me on a regular basis because I was going practically every month. And she said, and I've been helping you to stick patches on this canoe of yours. She said, you're paddling. And she says, but your canoe sprung a leak. She said, and I've been helping you to stick patches <laughs> on it. But she said, I think the time has come for you to really pull out pull the boat out of the water and have a look at what's going on. And then and then she said to me, um, okay, uh, what's your goal? Because we always ended up the session, <clears throat> there was a lot of cleaning and she said, what's the session, what's your goal? And from, well, I, I, it felt for me at the time from nowhere, I, I went, I need to find my center and inner happiness within me. Oh. And she went, oh, where did that, where did that oh. come from? <laughs> where did that come from? And I said, I don't know, but, 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 that's, but that's what I need to have. And uh, obviously I realized that that was me kicking in my higher self, kicking in through to saying, okay, this is your intention. This is what you're, what you're, we're on your path now. This is the point at which in your brain, you got, you know, it was kind of like the download where you get the download to say, that's it. You're, you're now on to a new set, a new pathway. And I got this, um, I need to find my center and uh, inner happiness within me. She said, well, maybe it was for my highest and best goods and it was it met all the requirements of all the things that she checked. And so she said, okay. And, and that was it. And then in fact, in the end, after 11 years, I didn't go back to her because that was at the point at which I started to do it for myself, um, where I start, st stopped. N not so much I didn't have um, I didn't have um, people who helped me and mentors and guides and for the thing, of course, because of course you don't walk this path alone. But it was a it was the point at which I took up the reins and started to become consciously aware. And what happened was I started to to try and. And, you know, I don't even know how it was. I, oh, yes, I do know. I, I remember that something happened with my daughter and I went looking on the Internet for something to help me. And I stumbled across this particular video by a girl called Ali Washington of Perception Trainers. And she does a whole load of stuff, um, bucket loads and bucket loads and bucket loads about self-love. And uh, I started to, I watched this thing and I thought that was interesting. I think I'll go and watch more. And I ended up, she had about, at that point, she, um, she's quite prolific outpouring of ones and she's just a young girl, well, she's in her thirties now, but um, co compared to me, that was young. <laughs> um, and I started to work my way through all this backlog of, of self-love thing. And it was like, you know, and um, that was the point at which the scales fell from my eyes. And I went trepidatiously and asked if I could join her in her Facebook group and she took and I went into there thinking why would this young girl want to have an old buddy like me coming in you know um, full of de self-deprecation and putting myself down and full of lack of self-worth and lack of confidence and all the things that I'd had despite the fact that I'd got myself all the way to PhD and had this big career and whatever I was full of lack of self-worth um a lack of self-love uh and and that was the point at which I started to um, to talk to her. And she was the first mentor that I had on the path about the spiritual awakening and started to introduce me to the idea of me being a spirit, having a human experience. And once I picked that up, I just picked it up and ran with it. And then all of a sudden I started to have other things that happened. I went to, um, I started to do mind. The first thing that I did was mindfulness and did a mindfulness class. And then I started to explore Reiki. And when I went to a Reiki session, the first Reiki session that I had, uh, I, 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 I took a training in Reiki. I mean, and my daughter and I both did it. And when the, the lady who was a psychic intuitive, uh, who she, she was the lady who was leading the instruction for the, um, and she was doing our attunements for the Reiki. Uh, to to become Reiki attuned and when we were going through the ceremony the first time she was putting her hands on either side of my head and, and I, I, I could feel like a, a red hot 
red hot heat coming from my solar plexus coming up and it would get to about my throat and it stuck and then the second time I came up, then, then later on there was another process where she she did this and and I could feel this heat coming up and it would get to my throat and it would get stuck and then the final one she did it she was having her hands on either side of the head and it came up and up and up and up and up and it came up into my head and went <laughs> like this and she and she and and she, and she said that at the time she said her hands were thrown wide yeah. and she got the message through of mind expansion she said that this one you, she said you've just gone through a mind expansion and that was at the point at which it happened well, that's where at the point at which I started to get downloads where I started to um understand I started to be drawing my intuition kicked in and that was the process by which it was so so that was the that was the the way so it, that was the gradual process that it was and there were various kickstart points and kickstart points that did and I, you know I've since now it learned beautiful the way that you know now that all of this all of the things that happened to you you call them catalysts mm. were soul intervention and they help us out as much as they possibly can without doing it for us because <laughs> we chose to be here but you can see, I mean, I say kicked up the backside, but of course it's, it's never that you've been kicked up the backside. It's done with as much love as possible. And we are exploring and remembering who we are. And that's one of the, you know, the things that you, you learn when you're doing Reiki. It's like, I'm only teaching you what you know already. And it's like, right, okay. And I remember maybe like you at first, like, oh, I don't feel anything because you're in your head so much. But once you become in your body and you understand that yes you are feeling something and you don't need to throw everything away you don't need to ignore everything or like I was begin became you know obsessed about food and things like that because I was using food to keep all of these sensations that were coming up through the body at bay I was <laughs> I don't want to feel that so the easiest thing is just to sort of toss it away and just say well no I don't feel anything and, and stay in your head the whole time. And you know, mm. this is where most of the women that I help, they're overthinkers, overworkers. And I know you were talking about that earlier on, you know, like how much have you pushed yourself to sort of achieve something or reach the goals that society says, or your education says, or your upbringing says, you know, get on the mm. ladder, achieve this, achieve that. And all this effort, when you know that you are spiritually assisted, and that you are a spirit having a human experience, which is kind of a lot to get your head around if you're trying to take it from a head point of view. But then when you let the information come through, it's like, oh, really? <laughs> it is, it's a polar shift, isn't it? It really is yeah. being able to see things and feel things from a different perspective that can blow your mind and I like it when I read a book or I have a conversation with somebody and they blow my mind I'm like wow I never looked at it from that perspective anymore and that's why we love having these kind of conversations because they are here to sort of blow us apart if you like and, and let us dissemble all the stuff and all the rules and regulations and the beliefs that we've picked up along the way being on earth. Mm, although I've now um, come to the point where I realised the perfection of that and the reason why I did it and the reason why I chose to do it mm. and that um, the choices that I made, because I, I have over the years pieced together this, um, have, you know, the, uh, the process by which I've, I've gone through and realised that I have spent many, many, many lifetimes preparing for this particular time and that the reason why I chose the family that I chose and the reason why it was, was to um, to be given um, a narcissistic relationship that I had to cope with, which 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 undermined my self-confidence, which yeah. undermined my self-worth, which undermined, um, you know, and the experiences that I had when I was younger, which were to feel that I was never good enough, you know, so like you would yeah. bring home, you'd bring home, you were five years old and you brought home your sums and you say, look, mummy, I did sums and I got, I got 19 out of 20 and the, they would be immediately going, well, what was the but one that you got one. wrong? What was the wrong one you got wrong? You just have to try harder next time. So you never, you never got the praise. You always got the, you know, well, I knew for years and years and years that the reason for my perfectionism lay in that, but I was never able to do anything about it because it was all at an intellectual level. I understood it. Um, 
but I understood that the perfectionism and the drive, but I realize now that the reason why, the reason why I needed to, um, to have that experience, why the reason why I needed to have this is to prepare me for the, um, for the, the, this particular journey that I'm in in this lifetime. And because of the amount of the magnitude of the, of the, the amount of experience that I needed to pack into this lifetime. <laughs> I mean, and, it's and a lot, the, isn't it? You know, yeah, you, you because I mean, people who are doing this, it's a lot that they've packed in. I mean, you're talking yeah. about abuse, narcissistic relationships, over striving for perfectionism, yeah. burnouts, body body dysmorphia, um, rape, uh, and divorce breakdown, wholesale rejection, having my family not speaking to me for 10 years, uh, you know, so, so, and I realize now that all the reason why all these things happen to me is that I have, I, I, if I'm going to come in and do coaching and guidance for people yeah. and understand their awakening, if I haven't been through that experience myself, how can I relate to people who are going through that? So yeah. there's going to be, there's, there's very, very few things that people are going to, um, to come Shock to speak to me about, but I'm not going to have a, some kind of, some kind of relation or uh, some kind of understanding of what it is that they're, yeah. you know, the, um, the, the, of that particular type of situation. Yeah. Uh, but also the other reason why is that, um, that I needed to have, parents with drive and parents who pushed me and parents who um who 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 fed that um needing to strive and to always do what you have to do before you need to do what you want to do and and to and to over over produce and always to put others first and to push myself beyond my limits to burn out and all that kind of stuff um because because I had to get through a hang of a lot I mean in yeah. the time I had to I had to go through my my um my my childhood and my growing up and then I had to uh and then I had to um go and do my career and uh, and then I had to go and have babies and then I had to um then go from there and go into uh doing to go back in as an adult and start at that point taking qualifications and um and I mean when I was 32 I had um, two hires, which is like A levels or you know two hires to my name in a Scottish qualification, so it's not very good. And by the time I was forty-seven, I had a PhD, mm-hmm. so that was a fairly you know rapid go- growth through. Um, and I did twenty-two years of teaching at, uni- at college and then at university, uh, and that was to go through the process of um, being going through that journey myself and making that transition from college to university as a student. And then later on as a university, as a college lecturer, then going to do my PhD and then as a university lecturer. Um, So that I could then create a transition course for students who were coming from college to university, which is going to be the template, which is the template that I'm using for understanding that people going through awakening are going through a transition. So I've had to understand this whole process of going through all this transition myself in this lifetime, going through transition after transition after transition, and then understanding how to negotiate, how to navigate, how to navigate the liminal space, all the different things. So that when I come to help people who are the awakening, I understand the process of the transitioning from one way of being to another way of being and helping them to understand the process that they're going through and doing my PhD in work process knowledge which is a systems level understanding and expanding my mind to the point where I can see things from a systems level and understand the higher perspective and see things from the higher perspective so this whole so that's a lot to pack in to go from being completely untrue to yourself and completely cut off from being so disconnected from who you are which is where I was at 38 38 was when I had my first breakdown and I sat there saying I don't know whose life I'm living, but this is not my life, which was my first realization. And then saying, I need to find myself. And that was me setting off on the path from 38 onwards. Um, so um, so that, that, that was a, 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 um, an amazing journey that, that started at that point and going from completely untrue to myself to actually finding who I was and coming to the the so you get to see the essence of my soul consciousness that's a, a hang of a journey to travel in one lifetime you get to see the gift in the garbage you get to see the the overall picture like you say you know you get to sort of look at it from above and down yeah. and get to see everything that you've been through and the gift that it now is able to bring to someone else what would you say is your sticky point now because we are human and it's not all that rosy and everything all the time so what would you say is your sticky point right now um 
Well, actually, I've gone round and round and round and round and round, because, you, know, you know, we all learn in spirals and the <laughs> same thing. And, and we have particular strands of things that we come round and we go round and round in a spiral. And each time we go round, we get it to go in deeper and from a higher perspective. Um, and over the last um, four years, what I have done in the last four years has been to to I, I, because that's where I recognized where I'd actually been on this path for 24 years because you wouldn't be able to do it all in the four years if you hadn't been doing it for the 20 years before that you know so actually I had been offloading and even although I'd been going to the life coach um uh I I had been off and, and then two or three people before that had been helping me to understand that pain was stored in my body had been helping me to understand about how that um, pain was related to emotions and that if when you tapped into those emotions you could clear them and let them out of your body and the pain in your body would go away when you did that so I mean so all of that and then recognizing the inner child and then healing the inner child and then coming to grips with um, um, dream understanding dreams and then going through all the process of self-help and um, and trying to fix myself because I was broken, and that um, and going through all that uh, process of seeing the way that the way that um, there's 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 quite a lot of what goes on in this in the spiritual is 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 like you're broken and you need to be fixed as opposed to this is all part of what the process is and you know and coming to a place of acceptance and and um, um, would you say the sticky point it. is that you're still keeping going through that but you look at it no at no the sticky this the, what's happening yeah sorry thanks for bringing me back on track <laughs> I was going off I was going off a wee tangent and I thought oh I've lost my way where am I where am I I'm coming back I'm coming back okay so yeah so I've been going round and round and round and what's happened over the last four years is that I've actually um managed to get down to the bedrock on most of them and and actually get to the point where and where most of them are transmuted so for example um my relationship with my mother I have got to the point where I've torn up that soul contract with her because I no longer need her um, to be to be to perform that service for me. I no longer need her to be uh, uh, the niggle or the person who pushes or the person that has that grit in the oyster shell, um, because I had reached the point where I had transmuted that into a place where we had where I had met her on an adult adult basis and, and I was able to approach her in that relationship and since I got to that point and tore up that soul contract our relationship has become beautiful now and it's isn't what that the relationship amazing that I have always wanted is you know? possible isn't that amazing and beautiful that that is possible I too have myself and I seem to attract you know women that I work with because I work with the body and the fact that Often it's the story of the mother, such a strong character that comes through, who's been pushing your buttons all these years. You can't stand in the same room as your mother without shrinking into being this, <laughs> this nothing person. And then with a few changes of stories or a few sort of getting into the energy and then see the energy sort of lifting off and coming away from you, this, you want to call it an entity or whatever, but it is an energy that is held in your body and it could have come through her from her mother from her mother and it just it's just this way of being mm. and then all of a sudden you've changed something and you just it's like really did I used to feel that way about her it, it's gone yeah, and it's so gone. also the physical symptoms that, and the stress and the anxiety and the pressure and the the build-up of uh, wanting to prove yourself or feeling a victim or all the stuff that goes along with this mother energy is huge. So, yeah, thank you for bringing that up because that, I think, is such a valuable thing for us to admit. Mm. And it's not that we despise our mother and hold it against her that we may have done for a while. It's just like, what a gift. Mm. It's a tough gift. And what a, what a role they chose to play mm. for us so that we could be stronger and more capable it was it's massive that that, and, that uh, mother energy and, mm. and that's that's where you start off you feel that you're a victim of this and that she is the more powerful one and yes. that she, she's there being powerful and you're there being yeah. weak and this parent child relationship and and whatever and what i realize now is that when there, there came a point um when i separated from my first husband and then got together with my second I was about 22 years ago and um and she didn't like 
my new husband and well she didn't like any of my boyfriend she um I mean I could have I often used to joke um I could have bought home Jesus and she he would she would have complained, <laughs> to, she would have complained about the the long hair and the sandals do you know I mean she just was she it was and it was always like well I just don't like him and well it's, you're going to have to choose between him and me and and at that point I thought well it's going to have to be him and not you because um and what ended up happening was that was when my family turned their back on me for 10 years and, and my parents and my brothers and whatever um didn't speak my, my brothers didn't speak for 10 years and in fact one brother still doesn't um but the uh, it, it it was a it's an odd kind of thing but when you get to the point where you realize that in actual fact that they, they as a soul they chose to come down to play this role for you yeah to be this one to push and push and push and push and push and to be this one to uh but there was there was, and that's where the the mother child the mother daughter relationship is probably one of the strongest bonds that keeps you coming back because with any other person, if it hadn't been my mother, I would have walked away. I, I would have I walked away from husbands. I would, you know, you can walk away from from lots and lots of people. You can walk away from partners. You can walk away, you know, to even some extent, your children can leave you and whatever. But the mother, but when you, if you try to separate from your mother, um, there's almost like this big taboo in society. Oh, but she's your mum, you know, and you've got yeah, yeah, yeah. And but I went through that whole process of being angry at her and being um, f- feeling victim of her and fighting it and pushing away and uh, realizing that so many of the things that you know she could push all my buttons. And I think that the people who are like your parents or your or your son or your daughter or whatever, they, these are the ones that are they are the closest to you. They are the ones that know you the most, and they're the ones that are able to push your triggers, to push your buttons. Um, and so, therefore, what what you do is is that any time they are performing the the they're being a mirror back to you as to what you need to see. Uh, so. Mm-hmm they're mirroring back to you what it is you need to see. And so if you're getting triggered, it's never about them, which used to drive me bananas. Why can I not sometimes, why can I not just sometimes be about them and not about me? But it's never about them. It's always yeah. about you. Yeah. So if you are being triggered by it, if you are being set off, if you're unhappy about it, it's always about what's going on inside you. What what am I making this mean? How am I abandoning myself in this situation? What can I do? But you can it? see why. It is that mirroring back to I need to see. People go on to alcohol or food because it's just unfathomable by yourself isn't it so I mean you can see that this is a key relationship that starts you off very early on in your journey it doesn't get resolved but what happens is you choose partners who have similar similar traits who take on (laughs) totally well done they take on that role because you've changed you've decided I'm going to, I'm going to divorce my mother. I'm going to detox from my mother. I'm not going to deal with it. Boom. You get someone who's a bully, a narcissist, um, mean, wicked, and you kind of go, oh, I'll divorce them then. And then another partner comes on and they've also got certain traits and you kind of go, what's going on? And at some point you have to say, I am the only one who can deal with this. Mm. And I have a funny story that I was so enjoying throwing darts at an ex of mine it gave me like sciatica for nine months I had a terrible time I separated from him I was a single mother with two kids living in the house with my two kids who took on his role one of my boys Mm -hmm. and I knew for years because it, it broke me financially, it broke my back, it broke everything in me. And it was just like, will you get on with it, Fiona? And will you clear up that need to throw darts that it's external and that it's someone else? So you are the only one who can change it. I changed my story and which changed the energy between me and my ex. Mm. And within a few days, my sciatica had gone. And I'd been going to osteopaths, kinesiologists, you name it. Then I had to change the story when my son picked up the baton, changed my story with him. And within a week, I changed the relationship with him as well. So you're, it's lovely that you say that because it's, I think this is what we're being asked to talk about. Relationships are some of the hardest things we have as humans to deal with on an every single day basis. They affect us financially. They affect us physically. I mean, obviously, emotionally and mentally, but there are ramifications with that 
And if only we could see them as a reflection of us or a reflection of God, see the beloved in them. Mm. But our training, our education and all the movies we watch is just so much nicer to throw sticks and stones at someone. Healing relationships yeah. is allowing you to love yourself. Yes. Yeah. I, I the, 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 this, the point at which my relationship with my mother healed and I realised that I had spent years and years going through um, learning what my trigger points and then when I found the trigger go within and love that part of myself that had been pushed off because I mean the, as you no doubt know and um, um, when we go through the process in the very early childhood and that especially that's why the mother-child relationship is so important when we go through these early uh, situations we learn um how to please the people around about us because our survival depends on them um and and also when we're empathic but don't know we're empathic we are able to pick up I mean I didn't know and I was empathic until four years ago yeah <laughs> and then and then realized that I was super empathic and I had just said and all these things that had happened in my life that I just took and think doesn't everybody feel like this oh no they don't oh okay Do you know <laughs> and it's like I realized that I had been empathic but hadn't picked up on it um but I was able to understand and and to pick up you know when mummy was annoyed or whatever and so yeah. therefore if I was doing something where mummy was annoyed then mum, my survival depended on mummy's approval and so therefore I had to then sort of if mummy told me off every time I did x then I stopped doing x because mummy didn't approve of that and so therefore this part of me which is an essential part of me got pushed off into the corner and of course what happens is it keeps on coming back because it's part of you and, and it keeps on coming back and trying to assert itself in a healthy way and in which case sometimes it doesn't you know um uh, and we keep pushing it away and go, no, I don't like this bit about myself because because this gets me dejected. This gets me. This makes the love go away. I've got to keep pushing this bit of myself away. And of course, it, it keeps on trying to express itself. Um, and in the end, it expresses itself, if not in a healthy way, in an unhealthy way, you know, and through addictions or whatever. And, mm. uh, and certainly I had a certain addiction, food addictions and various other things that um, have um, have manifested them in a way because of parts of myself that I was repressing. And it wasn't until I came to the self-love part of myself, when I, the self-love realisation and when when the dam broke on that is, is that is when Ali had said to me, could it be that you are projecting onto your body your you know your dislike you know that you're understanding you're projecting onto your body it's unworthiness when because you it's you rather than feeling yourself that you are unworthy and that was kind of when the dam broke and when I started to understand that it was that there was parts of myself that I had pushed away into the shadows and then started to bring these and going through um the heart space room which is a meditation that I've done which I've since created into a little mini course but um but going into the heart space room and meeting these parts of yourself and meeting these aspects of yourself and reuniting with them and and then allowing them to express and saying okay I pushed you away and rejected you for so many years because I was scared of the love going away but look here here you are you're six here I am at 50 odd you know uh, let me let me explain this to you in a way that brings you up to date you know because you get stuck at six and you get stuck in this belief this false belief that you needed to repress this part of yourself because love doesn't go away but look if I give you this love if I love you in this way if I give you this love you don't need to look outside of yourself for this love because I can give it to you here come back in to bring them back inside yourself and that part of yourself no longer is looking outside for external validation for external worthiness mm -hmm. for external love because you've given it to yourself it's you've brought that part in yeah it's an amazing tool it's an amazing journey but like we said before the those relationships that come up I remember Dr Christiana Northrup saying this as well that she knew exactly which buttons to press on her husband to keep him happy the same as we learned which buttons to press or when your mum's hoovering or when your mum screams or whatever and you're like oh okay well I'll just you know go. and you know then in relationships from the first breath or the first step of that person you're living with <clears throat> Right, that's what today's going to be like. So you adapt yourself. You are, I mean, so many of us, I think everybody is empathic. We are very sensitive. Mm. And certainly mm. if you've gone through narcissistic or relationships or abusive relationships or abuse from a parent or just throw in a very, very bully kind of. I mean, and I say a narcissistic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she, 
yeah she was very loving and she loved me and she didn't know she was doing it and she knew and she came from a place where um where she had been brought up in a situation in a home with an alcoholic father you know so um you know so that you understand you get to understand why why they themselves are are um have been through their mm. own journey and they have all these things passing down i mean nobody in themselves is inherently bad or you know it's all meaning that we are ascribed to understanding that they are the yeah. way they are my son yeah. was being bullied at school when we eventually got together with the mother and the son to hear this bully's story was so identical to the way my son was feeling himself so you almost attract you attract those people in because that's the mm -hmm. vibration you're in i remember one mm -hmm. lady saying to me i want to be in a new relationship and i want a new relationship with my body but i want to attract and i said well you don't want to attract them now while well, you're thinking and you you've got this kind of stuff going on in your body you'll only attract somebody at, at the vibration that you're at wouldn't you far mm -hmm. rather attract the person who's like this or like that or you know mm -hmm. you design who you want to attract by the vibration that you are too and then hopefully you can carry on growing together and understand what's going on and that's and how so that's you create love yeah and that's why you need to the person the relationship in any relationship you have the person you have to you can't change anybody else and nor should you try to because everybody has free will and they can um they can move from their 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 own position and they see the world from their unique perspective so if you want the dynamic to change between you and somebody else then you have to change yourself and not change yourself in a way that is um but change the way the dynamic between you and how you feel and how you see uh the, the, how i ended up with the with the changing and altering the relationship with my mother was um in a guided meditation that I did in my heart space room, um, I ended up, um, I invited her in and I saw her where she is um, in her in her chair, in her living room where, and me sitting in this chair and her over there, you know, where we would normally be in, in relation to that. Uh, and she was frozen the way that you can when you bring somebody in to be able to interact. And then you can visualize what the relationship is and you get sort of symbolism as to what the relationship is between you and you can see connections and you can see things. Um, and what I, I did and felt called to do on this particular day was to, um, was to go around and to actually take out to go around and sit down and sit in her seat mm -hmm. and look back at me now some from my perspective when i had first come into this room i sat over here looking at my mother and um and i i saw her as now i mean she's now 86 and she's small and frail and um and the in a, and, and I was in a very, very different position and I loved her, but was still finding this relationship difficult to cope with because I, I had moved on, but I still hadn't quite got to the point where, where the relationship was, was, was going the way that I'd wanted it. Uh, and, and, and I could see her and I just saw that. And as far as I was concerned, there was three feet of floor between us. When I sat down in the chair that she was at and looked at, back at me from her perspective, there was this enormous chasm, a huge, huge, deep, 20 foot deep hole. And she had a chain fence across it. And she had all sorts of pointed staves pointing back towards me. And I'm thinking, oh my God, she's scared of me. She's scared of me because she has seen her power fade and my power grow. And she feels scared of me that I'm in a position to crush her. And that, you know, and so that was where I realized that this person who had been huge and powerful and, and and enormously powerful and somebody who had con total control over me from when I was a child, how that relationship had spiraled down to her being old and frail and looking at me and thinking, oh, I'm afraid. And, and then I started to look at my own behavior and realized that over the previous number of years that I had blown hot and cold. And I had, from my perspective, had been saying, oh God, you know, she's trying, she's having a go at me and, I, and I'm, she's doing this and she's doing that. And, and I'm, feeling, I'm feeling vulnerable. And so therefore I'm not going to speak to her for a few weeks until I regroup myself and feel strong enough to go back in again. You know, so I had been looking at it from my perspective and about how I had been doing, how I had been protecting myself and been looking at it from how I looked at it. But when it wasn't until I got and sat in her chair, I realized how, how hot and cold that was, how she couldn't rely on me, how sometimes I would be friendly and then other times I wouldn't speak to her for a couple of weeks and two or three weeks. And that realization made me realize that I had 
it wasn't all about what hard doing to me and you know that it, that I had a responsibility to make sure that the relationship worked well and that I was if I wanted her to give me unconditional love and to be consistent mm. and to sound pleased when I phoned up which was not not much to ask I had to do that for her too I had to give her unconditional love I had to accept her for who she was I had to um look at her and see a person who felt vulnerable and who felt who was trying to protect herself and and who was just doing what she felt that she needed to do to protect herself to uh, from the relationship and from being hurt by the relationship with me Isn't and it- once that I started to do that I realized my duty of care to her as well and realizing that she had given up her life to well not given up her life but devoted her life to loving me mm-hmm. but also being the catalyst to help push me push 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 to get me to the point where I could come to that realization and come to the self-actualization of my relationship with her and say I don't need that relationship with you anymore mum I want to have and at that in that relationship at how it ended up in that guided visualization I met her higher self my higher self and met met her higher self and we hugged and embraced and said Thank you so much. We can tear this contract up now. Yeah, it's no longer ne- it's it no longer funny, necessary. How you come Beautiful. In and you Beautiful. understand what that contract is. When you understand what the contract is, I had a, a girl that I was working with who was battling terribly with her sister. And I was like, okay, but I could feel what was going on with her sister. And I thought, okay, well, I've never done this before, but I asked her, would you be willing to play? I wanted her to have an experience of what it must be like for her sister. So very similar to you, we invited the energy in of her sister. And I said, well, just step into the energy of your sister. Just be your sister for a little while. Step into that bubble Mm. and look through the eyes of your sister about what's going on in her life or how she looks at you or how she looks at your parents or how what's going on in her life. And this girl, she felt the energy in her body shift. So she, she knew it wasn't her because we, we always work with like what's home. You have to really know where your home is inside you, what you feel like. So that when you experience a different perspective of someone else, you know, like, that's not how I feel. So she knew that it was her experiencing her sister's outlook on life. Mm. And from that moment, she was able to sort of oh, wow, and I wouldn't want to live my sister's life for all the tea in China. Mm. She has this outlook on life, or this this worry, or this stress, or this is going on. So just being able to see someone else's perception, as well as change your own story and understand the relationship between you, is such a beautiful gift. And it just, okay, I don't need to think that way anymore. I don't need to have those thoughts anymore so like you say you can tear up the contract or it's non it's a non-issue now Mm -hmm. and I think when I've been working with people like that and understanding then when they feel that when they feel in the energy of their sister when they feel in the energy of their mother you can see the triggers and you can see why we overeat or why we obsess about this and just keep our minds so busy because it's so painful for us being you know empathic and sensitive and sixth sense that we feel that she knew she felt that every time her sister walked into the room but she hadn't actually known <laughs> what she yeah. was picking up it and hadn't come into her conscious awareness up. yeah yeah and that's that's one of the things that uh, is that when when you do come into conscious awareness when you actually awaken to the point of knowing that you're the spirit having a human experience and going through and you start to look back at the experiences that you've gone through you suddenly see them through such a different lens and, and go oh well i looked at that and then and then and it's my it was so different so different I, and there's something that just jumped to mind and it's 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 relevant um because um, Princess Diana, right? Um, I don't know if you watch The Crown <laughs> or if the Netflix do the, the, have got The Crown. And, and uh, when I was younger, in my 20s, I was, oh, such a royalist and so um, absolutely besotted with um, Princess Diana or Lady Di, as she was. And because we were contemporaries, we were only a few months difference in our age. And uh, and I was also engaged to get married. And I... Friends. 
and into my prince yes <laughs> and uh, uh, uh and i i remember her coming in and uh, and the engagement being announced and and then all of a sudden they were getting married and you know they got six months later and, and we were having to wait two and a half years you know till we could afford to spend you know to save up enough money to get a deposit for the house and everything <clears throat> and i i can remember being really um really envious of her at that point and really uh looking at her seeing her through this lens of being so beautiful and you know she had she was so beautiful and she had such long legs and I always hated my legs and always thought my leg you know my bum was too near the ground <laughs> I had these short legs and um and I always uh I I just thought that everything about it was perfect and I bought book after book after book and and then over time as we all know how think how that all unfolded I started to become more and more aware and more and more uncomfortable about the fact that magazines and I stopped buying magazines that had pictures of her on the front because I thought mm, this feels exploitation you know, they 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 put they put they put the picture on because it sells twenty five percent more more people maybe more pages. Well, I'm not there to be used in that way, and and um and I started to not look at all these things and and then realise that as it went on, and then how it's now coming out now, especially in the Crown and mm. this Diana her own story and and what have you that she's got it that that she was had bulimia and she was being sick and she was going out there totally subjugating her feelings um, in a in a marriage where there was the, the, the other he didn't understand what she wanted because you know I've got my mistress and you just have to provide the air and the spear and go off and do your own thing and, and you're not mind. allowed to have a and you're, not, you're not allowed to have you're not, you know you're not you know you've got to you've got to be the the um you know so all this stuff was going on in the background and I was totally oblivious to it at the time and then you look back at it from you know 40 years later 30 odd years later and you go oh, well, I have quite a different perspective of that now because at that time I def desperately wanted to live her life and now looking back at it, I wouldn't have touched it with a barge boat. And right. I thought, God, you know, um, so it's like, it's like how your perspective changes. And, and that's very much the way that people, people do is that you see the world perfectly at the point and level of awareness that you're at at that point mm -hmm. and that is right and proper and the way you are and it's not wrong or bad that you are in this narcissistic relationship or that you are overeating or that you're having bulimia it's an experience that you your soul has chosen to go through to allow you to go into the depths of that emotion the depths of that feeling the depths of that experience so that you can then come out at the end of the other side of that and understand that and when you get to the point where you see it from that higher perspective when you get through that level to the next level and you turn back and look at it and you see it from the higher perspective you think oh I see it really differently now and then you get up to the next one you think well actually I can see the perfection in that yeah, yeah. and then and then you come up to the next level around and you go well actually I can now see it from both of their sides and see that there was no right or wrong in that situation. Yeah. It was just two people who were using this circumstance and situation to explore them, their, their soul, to allow their soul to expand in a whole new way. And it was a story that they were creating that would allow them to expand uh, and grow in a way that was unique to them. And, and, that, and when you realize that that's what your soul journey is all about, you go into situations with a very, very different, and you, to bring it back around to what you're seeing is sticking you, is that, is that um, I'm not saying that I never have challenges because of course I do. And mm -hmm. at the moment, I'm expanding my business and I'm moving over from, uh, you know, to, to, to grow um, uh, my, my, and start selling my course. And, you know, that I have challenges. I, I like I'm all, any human, I have challenges. But when things get sticky, I've now got the tools, mm -hmm. you know, I've now got the tools to know what am I making this mean? How am I abandoning myself? How can I do this? You know, I've got go-to people. I've got tools. I've got go-to people. I've got ways of going inwards and looking with inside myself and, and asking my guys and asking for, for you know, okay, not being in resistance to it. Because one of the things about the stickiness is when you are in resistance to something, that's when the suffering happens. This should not be happening. This is wrong. And yeah. <laughs> Not agree with this so as soon as you go not into the this, this is not fair why is it them you know so as soon as you go into the this is not fair and why is this happening to me or whatever then you start to go into victim mode you start to your vibration level starts to drop you start to to go thing and if, if that's what you've to go through we all sometimes yeah there are sometimes there are days where I have a duvet day like everybody else and I get under that duvet and just think 
today I feel rubbish and I'm going to allow myself to feel rubbish. Yeah. But then the next day you get up and you go, okay, what was all that about? Yeah, what was all that about? I, I allowed myself to feel rubbish. I sat with it. It's something coming up. I recognize that it's something that's working its way up to the surface. What was it? Please, you know, and then I'll use my crystal ball or use my, my cards or I'll tune in or, or um, I'll have a chat with my daughter who's really highly empathic and can speak to my higher self. Um, and, we, I, and then you go through and you go, okay, well, unpack it. What was it? And then you realize, you go, ah, I understand now why that happened. Yeah. And, the and sometimes it doesn't happen until a day or two days later. Mm -hmm. And I know at the moment, an awful lot of people are sort of really getting a lot of rubbish sort of coming up to the surface. And you kind of go, wow, God, why do I feel that way? I think it's not to, to be rebellious against it. And I have a rebellious nature, but it's just, wow, that's interesting. And try and catch it at the sensitivity level when you're feeling, what is it? You know, rather than going and, and running to the fridge or, or doing what we normally do. Oh, I'm going to leave the house. I'm going to go walk. I'm going to call somebody. I'm going to do something. And um, if it's too difficult to sit with, and feel what's coming up but just be aware oh i am feeling something i can't unpack it right now <laughs> maybe i can unpack it later or i can listen to something something that um i wonder how you feel about that one of the things that i realized though i tried it for years was sitting still in meditation fine but it wasn't moving the emotion out for me. I really find that now I am in the phase of my body said to go for a run. I'm like, I'm not a runner, I don't run. But what my body was calling me to do was skip and jump and just, just move to some, have some sort of movement to sort of shake it off. You know, the animal, if it goes through a traumatic experience, it goes through that to shake mm -hmm. off the adrenaline, to shake it, shake it out. But we humans don't and I've noticed over the last few months that I've taken up just dancing just shaking it out because all the stuff that's coming up that's still percolating it's not necessary to go and dig in amongst it all the time but just let it out and the last thing we let go of is the head we can dance and you can do all the rest of it but the head is still oh, still the head but if you can be a headbanger <laughs> if you can just move it out so that you're not thinking I think we live in a time of just so much analyzing and overthinking and uh, strategies and those kind of things where we are perfectly capable of not allowing it to sort of be overthought about sometimes when I'm talking to someone I'm like you're overthinking it you're going too deep my spirit's saying to me they're overthinking it they're going too deep let's just <laughs> see if we can just let this out without it you know because we're creating another story around it if we're overthinking about something as well so for me at the moment meditation's great sometimes but I really know that I have to move in a way well everybody as in the doubt finds their their own way and I've tried all sorts of different yeah. things um but it eventually just it works its way through um i have a um i have a very powerful mind i've spent many many i spent decades developing it yeah. <laughs> expanding it and yeah. expanding its capability um but where where i get if you're if you are going to have a sticky point it's where my mind decides that um it, it knows where it's going to go and it, what it wants to do and how it's going to lead and you're going to say well actually um you know you're not the architect <laughs> you know there's the, the, the there's um there's the um uh, the, the the architect the the one that's the um that's got the the blueprint is your higher your higher self um and your your soul guidance and and then your um your heart is yeah okay well my heart's going to lead me because it's in connection with that and it's going to tell me in my body what feels right and what doesn't feel right and whatever and then the head sort of tries to sometimes do you know it, it tries to be the strategist and it tries to um to decide which direction it's going to go and it's going to try and how to get there and really when you you say well actually head you've got a brilliant role you are you are you're beautifully needed and you you have a role but your your role is is how to work out how to get there um, because the architect has said, you know, this is the direction we're going and, and the heart is saying, this is the direction we're going and the, and the head has got to get, just work out, okay, how am I going to get there? And, and But not to, how am I going to get there in, in, a, in a way, because there's, there's, always, there's always this, 
par- paradox where you you've got to make the aligned action to get you in the way but you've also got to release the outcome and let it go in divine timing and like you know there's there's always that there's quite it's quite complex paradox of of yes putting yourself in that direction making your intention setting your intention trying to do manifesting but also allow the fact that it will unfold the way it's going to unfold in, in divine timing as well and so therefore you so you set your intention you say you're going to do and then you let go of the outcome and say okay I'll just do what I'm, I, I'm going to do on any particular day and see how it unfolds. So, so that that's yeah. that's my challenge at the moment is um, <laughs> is to let go. <laughs> I let think go. That's brilliant what you're saying there, and I want to sort of finish off on this particular subject as well. I would say, wouldn't you find that the hardest thing for somebody with a powerful mind, and we're a nation of powerful minds, overthinkers, overeducated, and everything else. It, it, it's played a part and all of a sudden, you know, we believe and we know to have faith and trust something that you don't see and to let go. And when you identify, so people would say, but Fiona, you're so stubborn. You're so, you bulldoze your way through, you get done what you need to get done. I've never known anyone get things done. So you identify with that. And all of a sudden you have this, just let go. Isn't that just the the biggest paradox? <laughs> yeah. The biggest opposite pole that you could possibly imagine. And it just, if you look at it from a, you know, if you were standing off the planet and looking at the game, you just kind of go, that is the craziest game ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, because because the, the, that, that was probably what I had to do most of in the last four years is realise that my... Um, my head had got me here um, because I kept on pushing, 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 pushing. Um, and then there, there came a point where in, in some of the visualizations or, or sessions that I did with various people I actually come to the realization that I'd got there, you're here, um, you know, you've, you've made it, you've, you've achieved what you want to achieve. Now you have to slow down. And you have to learn to step back, you know, that um, you have to learn to unpick all this. You've got to learn to go slowly. You've got to slow down your rhythm. And that that was one of the reasons why um, the course that I do, which is OK, I'm Awakening, um, is actually a tracking of my journey. And it's taken me, you know, like if I had been creating a course, because I did many, many, many courses at university. And part of what I did at university was to create courses. And that was what my great mm-hmm. strength was. And if I had created a course, I would do it in two or three months because I was doing it from the head. But I kept on being told, you have to do this one from the heart and you're not going to be able to create the video. And there's like 24 videos. You're not going to be able to create the video until you can do it from the heart. Not only do you know it intellectually, but you're embodying it and you're doing it and you understand it at a soul level and you understand it in your body and you're living it. And mm-hmm. so um, it's taken me it's taken me two and a half years to write this course because I've had to go through that process. Yeah. And, there, and in fact, there was a bit in the middle where there was a whole year and I didn't didn't write I didn't do it I was doing lots of other things but I didn't write any more videos for this course for about a year and that was because I had to go through this whole process and very much this year which has been in the lockdown year that we've had here has been a, a case about taking us really deep within and allowing us to get to the point where we get off this hamster wheel you know of produce 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 out, out, out you know uh, production produce out and whatever and, and go market no. market market yeah. push it out yeah. push it out push yeah. it yeah, yeah. Oh. Go within stop yeah. go within stop slow down take it slowly learn to stop learn to smell the roses learn to see the gems at the side of the roadside learn to find the joy in the moment slow down slow down and and that has and i i had to and i resist 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 (laughs) all the way through i wanted to push 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 because that was what the head was going and what i had to learn was to disengage the head and learn to drop down into the heart energy and learn to slow down and that's what this last year for me has been about has been learning to come and approach it from this this much more slower and more connected heart energy and that's where I'm moving forward and just like you're saying when you can't attract um people uh you can't attract a partner if you're still not feeling good about yourself well I feel that you can't be successful that you're that that I am looking for people to attract to me the people who are ready to um relate to me in the way that I am now and 
that's why a year ago or two years ago or whatever why my business didn't get off the ground because I wasn't ready yet I had to be ready myself to be able to go out into the world before so that I would attract and I could so that my heart resonance would attract the people who are heart resonant with me as opposed to waiting for um trying to do it when I was not there yet myself yeah yeah it's, it's funny it just it's always bringing myself back to that pause oh and then thrr, pause thrr. <laughs> yeah it is it's 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 quite a funky game to be playing this getting out of your head I was um and also how soul intervention comes in because you know she's showing you this is what you need to see so I always say yes and always see what's in front of me or just pops up randomly. And there was this, um, years ago, there was this animal communication. One of my sons is a natural animal communicator. And we've done that all the way through their lives. I've tried to keep them open to talking to trees too. And this program came up of animal communication. And I've been, I've just been passionate about this for a long time, you know, um, animal whispering and I'm a body whisperer because I hear what's going on on a soul level when somebody comes to me with an ache or a pain or overweight or something anyway so this popped up this animal communication and it was like well there's no coincidence there no coincidence whatsoever and I have followed a certain animal communicator in South Africa and been very curious. She had a lovely story about um, Diablo, the Black Panther, who turned into spirit, the Black Panther. I mean, a fabulous story. Anna Breckenbach, her name is, and I would love to go and work with her. But it is, it's getting out of your mind. And people are using drugs or food or alcohol or sport or being over super busy to anything to get them out of their mind, but it's not really disengaging the powerful part of your mind to let actually the more powerful part to come through mm. the bit that guides you mm. so yeah teaching how to get out of your mind and get back reconnect with your body and reconnect with your soul mm. it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you i can totally hear your journey and you're so right about getting yourself into the place where you can attract the people who are needing your services, if we're talking about it as business, or attract the partner, the lover, the friend, or the house. <laughs> I've written a book about, you know, some of the things I've manifested about, and it, maybe it didn't work for two years, and all of a sudden I just changed something, and then it, then the house turns up exactly as you wanted it to turn up. Mm. This is just all such a fascinating subject, and it, it's way bigger than us indeed indeed Allowing well us. yes it's been it's been a pleasure it's been a pleasure talking to you i've enjoyed it uh, it's one of the things that you um my, my my circle of friends who you can talk to these things has grown bigger but but, yeah. but right at the very beginning um if I hadn't had my daughter there, I would have been really struggling because there, there are so few people that were, were talking about it and who I knew or who would have looked at you and thought, you know, <laughs> would have given you a bit of a hmm kind of thing. And uh, and, and, and so it's, it's, it's really nice. Up. Yes, more and more and more people are making Luckily, we've got stuff. retreats and we've got all sorts of things and facilities yeah. and the internet. I mean, if we didn't have the internet, I wouldn't yeah. have a group or a network of women yeah. people and, and, that I could communicate with when I'm like, I'm going through something, I can't get through it myself. Yeah. And the and the the um the the speed of it now is even it's just exponential in terms of you know the the amount if I if I think back twenty years ago it would sometimes take me a month to work through something coming up and now they come up and you 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 have something coming up and by the next day it's been and going through and sometimes you have stuff that passes through you in about half an hour and you think yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, it's yeah. gone. You know. <laughs> so it's it's um it, the the speed of it and the, the processing speed of, by which we do it and how uh and how everything is going is speeding up. And that's the way it's supposed to yeah. be. It was supposed to yeah. be 
it's and it's not it's not going to get any slower it's um from, no, from it's what i understand it's going to get faster and faster and faster and the speed of change over the next 10 years is going to be the equivalent of 30 years worth of change in 10 years so it's going to be really um i'm going, going to find to it very fast. interesting watching my boys and of course their children as well about how different i mean i have these conversations with my children about how different the world is going to be it's yeah. so archaic Right, and I, I, we are I, here I, at the turning point to sort of spiritual beings, yeah, yeah. and but still live through it, you know. So this is why it's kind of like the this way and then that way, and the teeter totter and the pivot, you know, and getting getting to to grips with the fact that you've got this super brain, but then you're super conscious at the same time. How are we going to ascend while we're in a human body, raising kids? going to the or doing shopping, filling up your car with petrol. Yes, we're not monks sitting on the side of a mountain. No. <laughs> yes, it's going to be interesting to see how we do it. So, um, and oh, and nobody truly knows an MD who says that they do setting themselves yeah. up as a guru. So, um, uh, so it's which, just which uh, leads uh, me a little unfold. The brilliant statement that somebody said to me the other day is, this is what I know about the situation. Show me what I don't know. Hmm. Even the stuff yesterday is old. We have no idea what we don't know. Yeah. But we think we know because we've been taught or we've learned or we've got certificates or anything else. Like, this is what I think I know about this ache, this pain, this relationship, whatever. Now show me and make me open to what I don't know. Hmm. Thank you so much for today. Okay. I love, I love, I love you. I love what you're doing. I love what we're able to sort of share here today. And the fact that this sort of the relationship and the mother story and everything came up, absolutely brilliant. So we both had the intention of just letting this in, this um, conversation flow and go where it needed to go. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> absolutely my pleasure.